for the person you're all here to see, one of the nicest dudes around fucking Atlanta and around the country doing comedy. Uh, one of the people who inspired me to get into stand-up. Give it up for Joe Kelly. Hey, thanks. That was very kind of y'all. Thanks for coming out, everybody. What's going on? What's good? I'm Joe. Hello. <laughs> thanks for coming, everybody. I got arrested at a gender reveal party not too long ago. A <laughs> little bit about me. <laughs> this is what happened is uh, I just pulled my dick out on the bus. And then I was like, check it out, everybody. I'm a boy. <laughs> they got an age limit on those things. Nobody tells you, you know? <laughs> Making up for lost time. It's fun, man. It's good to see people's faces again. People aren't wearing the mask anymore. I like that. It's good. I miss people's faces. Miss seeing people's smiles, you know? I love it. I love that we're not wearing the mask anymore. I wore it last year, though. I didn't. As soon as they said I'd kill my grandma, I was like, I'll probably put one of those on. Because I like my grandma, you know? She's a pretty cool lady. But then I didn't, I didn't get that stimulus check, so I took that son of a bitch off immediately. Because she has inheritance. <laughs> Started giving her extra long hugs, you know. <laughs> French kissed her a couple times, too. Man. Like, Come on. <laughs> she bought Bitcoin on the dip. What am I supposed to do, you know? <laughs> I need some money. <laughs> That's fun, man. Y'all are good. I lived out of a van for a while, you know, which makes pulling my dick out on the bus make sense. You know what I mean? It's like, ah, homeless, homeless behavior. You know. Three years I lived out of my van. It was a pretty fun time, you know. People worried about me. My friends worried about me a whole lot. Not about my health or my well-being or anything like that. They were just like, Joe, how are you getting ladies back in that van? <laughs> I was just like, bro, with candy, of course. <laughs> Some things never change, you know what I mean? The ladies was the big question. Everyone else asked where I went to the bathroom. And that's, uh, that's an uncomfortable question to be asked. <laughs> you ever been asked where you go to the bathroom? Probably not. It's uncomfortable. I'd use a toilet like most people, you know? I'd use the idea of a toilet. You have to envision things, you know? Because sometimes a toilet is a toilet, right? <laughs> but then other times a plastic bag is a toilet. And sometimes you drink too much whiskey, your cooler is your toilet. You know what I mean? <laughs> but your toilet can never be your cooler. <laughs> it can't go back. <laughs> the hummus never tastes the same. You know what I'm saying? Pretty classy hobo, you know what I mean? <laughs> Eating hummus out of a van. That's world-class hobo shit, man. That's fun. Atlanta's great. I like Atlanta. We're in Atlanta for people listening. <laughs> it's fun. I love Atlanta. It's a great city. I'm not from here. Uh, here's my favorite thing about Atlanta. I'm sure some of y'all live here. Uh, weed is not legal in Atlanta, but you wouldn't know it. <laughs> Ha ha ha!
That's pretty cool. I like that. I walk around a lot in town, you know? Everywhere I walk, just smells like good weed. It's pretty cool. I like that. I spend a lot of time where it's EAV, walking around East Atlanta. I'm like, damn, it smells like good weed over here on the east side, you know? Sometimes I walk around wherever the fuck we are right now, you know what I mean? Grant Park, there we go, reference. Sometimes I'm walking around Grant Park going, damn, it smells like good weed here too. But then I realize this is just my backpack. So. <laughs> just keeps following me around. That joke almost put me in jail a week and a half ago. But that is for another time. <laughs> I don't have time for it. I got another weed joke. I'll do it. It's not great, but I'm going to do it anyway. It's all right. I don't know why I'm doing it, to be honest with you, but since we're here, I'll figure I'll do it. I like getting high at the farmer's market. That's like my favorite place to get high. Hell yeah. You, you, hell yeah, bro. Okay. Are you a, are you a farmer? You, I run the farmer's markets here. Oh, cool. Thanks for not kicking me out yet. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's very kind of you. It's pretty fun. I do like getting high at the farmer's market. It's my favorite place. I'm like, what better smell to mask my weed than fresh produce? You know what I'm saying? It's a good place to get high. Some fresh cukes, something like that. But I'm smoking away one day, right? Smoking away. And there's a guy there, and he has a kid. And he sees me smoking weed. And then he kind of keeps looking at me and then like looking at his kid and looking at me and then looking at his kid. And finally, I got a little bit upset with him. And I was just like, bro, I really don't know what your problem is right now, but I don't have enough weed for you and your kid. I was fairly certain that joke sucked, but thank you. <laughs> That's fun. Oh, hell yeah. I love leftovers very much. This joke is about old food. I love old food. Leftovers, you know? It's probably my favorite thing in life. I'm a simple man. Leftovers are great. I have a friend, though, she has a lot of money. And uh, she told me that leftovers are for poor, trashy people. I didn't know that, you know? Boo. Boo, indeed. I am that. That is what I am. But I didn't know that meant I liked leftovers, you know? <laughs> Had a predisposition for like a leftovers. Was born into it, you know what I mean? But then this lady, she starts doing this thing called meal prep. And I'm like, what's meal prep? And she's like, you cook all your food on Sunday and then you eat throughout the week. Like, That's what the fuck leftovers are, lady. <laughs> it's all old food. It brings us together. That's fun, man. Ladies are great. I like ladies. Some of y'all here are ladies. That's pretty good. Hey, yeah, yeah, there we go. Ow, ow. Love it, man. Ladies is my second favorite thing, right after leftovers. <laughs> Sometimes a leftover lady ain't half bad either. I will say that. Seasoned. <laughs> it's fun, man. Ladies are great. Y'all are wonderful. Y'all are fantastic. You're real positive and supportive of one another. I didn't realize that was going on. Keep it up. I think it's a good thing, all right? It's a lie, but for the sake of the joke, for the sake of the joke, stick with me. <laughs> I realized y'all kind of like hype each other up or whatever. I was at a real shitty dive bar this one time. You know how like people write on bathroom walls in dive bars? In the men's bathroom, like we really don't write nice things on those walls, you know what I mean? We're mean to one another. Like somebody write Chuck was here and then it would just say fuck Chuck. <laughs> you don't even know him. <laughs> Chuck could be in trouble. But fuck him. Because we don't care. 
But I happened to be in the ladies' room at this bar. You know, the men's room was out of order. I'm not weird. <laughs> That's always a weird thing to say. But the men's room was out of order. But ladies, y'all write nice things on those walls to one another. You do a good job. Somebody wrote, you're beautiful no matter what. Don't ever forget it. And I was just like, oh my God. Do you mean the mic went out? <laughs> Me? <laughs> Under that, <laughs> someone wrote, you're a queen. And then it said, yas, bitch. So I was just like, mm-hmm. You know, it made me feel so good, I sat down to pee. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Backwards, too. How about that? Sat down backwards. That's called empowerment. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I tried to squeeze a little extra juice out of that one, but it didn't happen. It's all right. Ladies, y'all are great. You're wonderful. Uh, sometimes you're mean, though, right? Sometimes you say mean shit. You can admit it. You know, there we go. Okay, thank you. It's very big of you. Downright manly of you, I should say. <laughs> it's like, ladies, y'all, ladies have this saying about men, and I thought everybody had heard it, but apparently not. But it goes, men are like parking spaces, the best ones are taken, and the only ones left are handicapped. <laughs> yeah. Damn, Ms. Ryan. <laughs> It's so rude. It's such a mean saying. You know what I mean? I rewrote it to make it a little bit nicer. So it goes, men are like parking spaces. The best ones are taken, and the other ones aren't that bad. You should probably give them a chance. Because you don't know what that parking space has been through, okay? Could have had a bunch of terrible people parking in before you showed up. It's like maybe you could not be such a lazy bitch and invest a little effort and just walk a little bit, you know? <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's a second part to that joke. I'm gonna do it because you seem to be having a good time with the first part. Because it's like ladies are like parking spaces too. All right? It's like ladies are like parking spaces. If it's too difficult to get in, you'll move along quickly. <laughs> but if it's too easy to get in, you can bet there will be at least three other people trying to get it at the same time. You know? <laughs> A little parking lot joke, you know what I mean? <laughs> get with it, people. <laughs> it's just fun. Anyway, hell yeah. I, uh, I do. I live in Atlanta. I think I mentioned that. I lived in Seattle for a little while. It's not the same place as Atlanta. It's different. <laughs> it's a very strange place, man. I've been all over the country, right? Telling jokes, doing whatever the fuck it is I do. And Seattle, by far, has the strangest people I've ever met in my life. They are fucking out there, man. Strange folks in Seattle. To me, Seattle is what happens when you just leave white people alone. <laughs> if that makes sense <laughs> to you white people. <laughs> they just do weird shit when they're left on their own, man. That's all. A lot of kissing dogs on the mouth out there. That's something that happens a whole lot. And not even their own dog. People just wandering in dog parts. They're like, oh, I gotta get a little taste of that one. <laughs> Is that a schnauzer? It's like, that's a German shepherd, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> Tastes the same. Anyway. <laughs> I 
love it. Atlanta's great, man. I like this city a lot. There's a strong spirit to Atlanta. Seattle doesn't have that. A lot of fragile people out there, real skittish type folks, you know what I mean? Scare real easy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this, okay. This makes me sound a little bit like a dick, what I'm about to say. But I was in Seattle, right? Three people got shot and the whole town just like freaked out. Everyone lost their mind, you know what I mean? And I'm not in favor of shooting anybody, but three people is not that many people. <laughs> very few people as a matter of fact but everyone freaked out you know and then I moved to Atlanta and <laughs> there were people get shot in Atlanta everyone's just like yeah <laughs> we'll call that murder Kroger from now on you know what I mean? You take it with stride, you know what I mean? I like that. It's a good thing, man. I lived in Nashville, Tennessee for a little while. Nashville has a murder Kroger. I'm originally from Flint, Michigan. We had a murder Kroger and a manslaughter Walmart. Gets rough out there sometimes, you know? But I feel like Seattle, all they got is like a stub your toe Trader Joe's. I really feel... Get some prunes and fuck off. Fuck it. Anyway, I don't know what that meant. I hung out at a lot of gay bars while I was in Seattle. We can cut that little part about the prunes out from the album, right? All right. And start the next track. Wait till everyone comes. There we go. I hung out at a lot of gay bars while I was in Seattle. It's a good time. I'm not even a gay guy, you know? Did you know you could do that? You can go right in. They don't check or nothing. It's a good time, man. It's fun. They got cheap beer at the gay bars in Seattle. In case you're ever out there, keep it in mind. It's what I'm here for. They have very cheap beer at the gay bars in Seattle. So I'd go for the cheap beer, but I would stay for the getting my dick sucked on. <laughs> so that's a pretty that's a pretty good deal, you know? Best drink special in the country. Give it a try, fellas. Go to a gay bar sometime. You get to feel like a pretty lady. It's nice. Everyone's trying to get you drunk. It's great. Because they're all trying to figure out. You're a challenge to everybody if you're a straight guy at a gay bar. They're all trying to figure out, like, how many beers is it going to take for this guy to let me suck his dick? The answer is six or seven. Yeah. Just a few, you know? That's fun, man. Hell yeah. I got in trouble a little bit out in Seattle, too. I, I misgendered somebody by mistake, you know? Didn't mean to. They got very upset with me. I don't care how anybody lives their life, you know? Have fun with it. But I'm new to this shit, you know what I mean? So give me some time, don't get all mad at me. That's all. She was like, how could you call me a sir? And I was like, I'm not trying to be disrespectful here, but your name's Andy. <laughs> and your dick is hanging out of your skirt. So just, just give me a second, that's all. <laughs> all right. 
<laughs> I like that joke. I don't tell it to nobody ever. <laughs> but I like it. Anyway, what else? Michigan. I grew up in Michigan. I think I mentioned that. The Flint thing. Grew up in Michigan, you know. Uh, when I was a teenager, we used to go uh, hunting, right? Hunting, or as I like to call it, jacking off in the woods. <laughs> That is what happened, you know. I just think it's difficult to convince a 15-year-old to kill something if he's not hungry. And I think it's difficult to convince him not to jack off. You leave him alone for like four minutes. You know what I mean? So that's just what happened. And I honestly think that's the most manly thing I've ever done in my life. Jack off next to a loaded gun. It's pretty gangster shit. Most of y'all ain't doing that, I know that. Most people jacking off next to their phone nowadays, that's what people do, you know? Sometimes you jack off next to the cat. It'll hop up on the bed, but hey, it's minding its business. Well, you can never do it next to the dog. Because the dog always wants to get involved, you know? He's always like, hey man, are you having fun up there without me? It's like if you fuck off for a minute, I'll let you lick my hand when I'm done. How about that? Special treats for my baby boy, you know? That's fun. I do like acid, if that makes sense. Might have picked up on that. LSD is pretty great. <laughs> I love it. I think it's helpful. I think everybody should do it all the time. But do it with purpose, you know what I mean? I've read a lot of books about acid, okay? About using the combination of acid with meditation and how it can result in higher states of consciousness and a better sense of self-awareness. But apparently I missed the chapter where if you combine acid with whiskey, it will result in you living in a van for three years. So, Well, some for you youngsters, you know. <laughs> I do. I love acid. I lived in Nashville, Tennessee for a while. I think I mentioned that earlier. That's what I'm going to call the album. I think I mentioned that earlier. <laughs> Hold those applause for a second, please. Thank you. Because this joke will need them. <laughs> so I lived in Nashville, right? I, I started doing comedy there. I love Nashville, Tennessee. It's a great place, man. Good comics up there. We, as a comedy community in Nashville, Tennessee, we broke the Guinness World Record for the longest stand-up comedy show. That was something we did four fucking times because we got nothing to do, you know? <laughs> so we kept doing it. But... The whole time, it was an eight-day show, right? Eight straight days of comedy, 24 hours a day, eight days a week. So the whole time we're doing the show, I'm trying to stay there the whole time. So I'm trying to find acid. <laughs> because if you take acid, it'll keep your brain going, and it'll keep you awake. I didn't find any acid that week. <laughs> but what I did learn is that if you deprive yourself of sleep and food for eight days, you'll trip balls. <laughs> And it feels pretty cool. <laughs> but it does make me real envious of all those starving kids in Africa, you know? Because those bros are tripping all the time. That's why they never swat the flies away. They're like, no, they're not even real. That's not even... <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
I had to do it. I had to do it. <laughs> this is the best person ever. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. And you're laughing at the shit that everyone else is like, Ooh, with, you know what I mean? <laughs> but all those people going, Ooh, do you donate fucking money? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. You can, you can solve the problem, but get off my back. <laughs> oh, man. Mushrooms are probably my favorite drug. I love mushrooms very much. Mushrooms, yeah, that's where it's at, man. Yes, I love mushrooms. But I, I guess I have a, a problem with mushrooms, you know what I mean? Not like a, not like an addict or nothing like that. Mushroom problem sounds bad. I've told this joke for seven years and I just realized what I'm saying. <laughs> I love them though. Love mushrooms. But I want to be, my thing with mushrooms is I want to be a tough person in life. I want to be a tough guy. I want to be an intimidating guy. You know what I mean? But I feel like I've taken too many mushrooms to accomplish that goal. You know, because I used to get riled up if I was out at a bar and somebody was like messing with me. But now I'm just like, hey, man, you want to keep messing with me? I love you unconditionally. <laughs> I'm not the one, bro. You want to keep talking that shit? How about I take you out back and accept you for your flaws, buddy? How about that? You know? so I won't give you a black eye, but I'll open your third eye. You know? Hey. Good way to resolve conflict. I got another joke about my grandma. This one, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I love my grandma. I may have mentioned that earlier. <laughs> it is getting bad now. I gotta stop. I love my grandma very much. She's a cool lady, man. She's in her 80s now. She's dope as fuck. I love her. She's gotten to the point where she's a feminist now. You know? She's like 88 years old and she's like, I'm gonna be a feminist. I'm not gonna wear bras no more. <laughs> And I'm like, that's real, you know, I support her, I love her. I'm like, hell yeah, go, Grandma, you know? <laughs> but she lives in Michigan, and it's cold, like, most of the time, you know? So it's like, her nipples are just out. <laughs> I can't tell her no. I can't tell her it's gross, you know? <laughs> Gotta let her do her thing. But it's, I don't know, man. It's so difficult to be around her, you know? Because we'll be sitting down having a nice, you know, Christmas dinner, having a nice Christian ham. And she's just sitting across the table from me with those nipples just pointing right back at me. I'm trying to enjoy some mac and cheese and I just got a big heart on the whole time. <laughs> That's my sexy granny joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Y'all have been fun. This has been a hoot. All right. I'm a single fella. How about that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Because I love my grandma entirely too much. <laughs> Yeah, kind of got a thing for real old bitches, you know what I mean? <laughs> nah, that's not why. But I don't have a joke why I am. I just am. But I'm trying not to be. I'm trying to, you know, find love. I'm out there. I'm on the apps. I'm swiping, you know. I'm looking for love out there. You know, I like to use Bumble. 
Bumble's one of my favorite apps. One time Bumble sent me an email and they were like, hey Joe, do you want to save animals? And I was just like, nah, Bumble. I want to fuck ladies. I thought that's why we were here. Been misusing it apparently. I don't know. It's such a confusing fucking way to meet people, to try and date, man. You know, they got like bios on the apps, right? You could talk about yourself, let people know whether basically you can lie. That's pretty much what it is. You lie. I don't. Everybody else, though. <laughs> anyway. The bios, I've noticed there's a thing that where ladies will always type this thing in their bios that no, they'll say something like, nobody ever reads these bios, so I feel like I'm wasting my time. And it's like, I read, I read every last one of those bios. But my whole thing is, I just don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I get confused easy, that's all. Because it'll say shit like, I'm a Sagittarius. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. Do you fuck? Because my bio is fairly simple. My bio just says, smoke grass, eat ass. That's what mine says. <laughs> I told that joke in Birmingham, Alabama one time. And boy, oh boy. I did my little smoke grass, eat ass thing, and some guy in the balcony just stood up and he just goes, oh man, that's where the shit comes from. <laughs> but he just said it like I didn't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he was trying to look out for me. It's like, hey buddy, you're gonna wanna be careful back there. Because that is where the shit comes from. Which is just such poetry. I love it. I think about that man every day. We're doing ass-eating jokes, people. Just so everybody is aware. Because it seemed like y'all kind of fucking pulled in on that one. A little bit. But I'm here to let you know, I eat ass. <laughs> I love it, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 now everybody, now everyone's cool, that's great. These guys had enough. <laughs> I love it, it's the only thing that I can do in life that makes me feel like a real man, I know that. I can't support anyone financially. I can barely love myself. But I can make your knees give out from licking your butthole. It makes me feel like a warrior, you know? <laughs> it's so strong. It's not for everybody. I know that. There we go. A couple. <laughs> it's a fucking an opera laugh or some shit. You're hitting octaves on that. That was dope. That was crazy. It isn't for everybody. I understand that. I'm not trying to gross anybody out here. I'm just trying to, you know, express myself as a human being. It's not for everybody. I'm not trying to convert. I got a good friend I talk to about everything with, you know. We're hanging out. We jack off back to back too sometimes, all right? How good are your friends? <laughs> but we're talking about the subject at hand, you know. Eating butt. <laughs> he's not into it, you know? So I don't judge him, he doesn't judge me. That's how it works. He's not into it, but he's thinking about it, you know? And he's like, I don't think I could do it, but then he's like, maybe if a lady came out of the shower, then I could do it. And I just looked at him and I was like, hey man, I'll be real honest with you right now. <laughs> you don't lick someone's butthole because it's clean.
You do it because it's a dirty thing you enjoy. Because if you come out of the shower and you're like, hey, Joe, you want to get up in there? I'm going to be like, why don't you go run around the block and then we'll talk, all right? Get some stank up in that mug. I know some of you are probably thinking, Joe, how much ass do you eat? <laughs> Sometimes I eat so much ass, I skip a meal. You know what I mean? <laughs> Buddy's like, you hungry? I'm like, nah, bro, I'm good. <laughs> Just had 55 inches of grade A bouté, you know what I'm saying? Full course meal. All right, that's the last one. You guys can lighten up. Maybe not. I do. This next joke is a Michael Jackson joke, so we're going to do it. I love it. It's all good and fun, people. I love Michael Jackson very much. He's one of my favorite. I've always loved Michael Jackson. Inspired me as a kid, you know, to maybe do great things. In my opinion, the greatest entertainer to ever exist is Michael Jackson. I truly believe that. But I watched that documentary last year, that Leaving Neverland documentary, you know what I mean? And everyone's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson did some stuff, and now people are like, you can't even listen to Michael Jackson, you know what I mean? And I feel bad about that. I don't know if I'm allowed to anymore without upsetting people. It's a fucked up documentary. If you haven't seen it, give it a go. It's fucked up, man. I don't know how to feel about it. Because apparently he was like teaching kids to jerk off or something like that. And that's a pretty fucked up thing, you know? But at the end of the day, if anyone is going to teach you how to jerk off, it should probably be someone who can moonwalk, you know? Probably has some interesting techniques, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's fun. Someone's gonna teach you, goddammit. <laughs> See, they're gonna be a great, a great entertainer or an average uncle, but someone's gonna teach you. Y'all remember when, when Joe Biden was sniffing girls? You remember that, too? Since we're on the topic. <laughs> this is old news. No one cares anymore. I just found it interesting. That's all. Because everyone came out and was like, oh, Joe Biden is sniffing girls or whatever, sniffing kids. And then immediately everybody started talking about Russia. You know? Everyone's like, I don't worry about that. Stuff's going on in Russia. You know? And it's like, I don't know what to think. But have you ever heard like the saying that if you, if you distract people with the left hand, they won't see what the right hand's doing? I feel like that's what Russia is, and I also feel like that's why Michael Jackson wore that one glove, because it was just... <laughs> it's up here sparkling away, and he's just jerking off kids. Oh, we made it through those. That's good. I was worried. I was definitely worried. But we made it through. Thank God. Thank God we did, man. That's pretty fun. I don't know. I had something. I forget what the fuck I was about to talk about. Okay. Now I remember. I got a business idea. Great in case there's any investors in this church. I got a great big business idea. It comes from my niece. I like, she sucks, I don't like her. I almost said I like her, I don't like her. I hope she hears this one day, fuck you, Madison. <laughs> She's a mean person, she's so mean to me. She can barely fucking talk and she's just mean. 
the only thing she said to me, she just goes, Uncle Joe, I don't like you. Oh, damn. And I was like, you know your mom's a whore, right? Did you know that? <laughs> Did you know there was supposed to be two of you before you, before you showed up? Did you know that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll cut that one, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> That's either a happy joke or a sad joke. You figure it out. <laughs> no, but she's cool. But she doesn't get disciplined, you know what I mean? She acts up or whatever. People don't want to hit their kids nowadays. I think that's a pretty good thing, you know? But this is where my business idea comes in. Is I would like you to be able to hire me to hit your kid for you. So that way you could be like, if you keep lying to me, that bad man will show up. <laughs> and I can be the bad man, you know what I mean? It's like when you see that gold minivan coming, you know you done fucked up, you know? It's fun. I like my niece, I was talking shit, but I do like her. I worry about her, I want her to be a cool kid. She's not very cool. She's, I don't know if she's dumb or just whatever. She's five. Are you, you know what I mean? She's five. So I don't know if she's dumb or not. But she's, I don't fucking know. But I worry about her. She's starting school. I want her to be a cool kid, but she just it doesn't have anything together, man. I worry about her. I feel like I'm just trashing a five-year-old right now, aren't I? <laughs> That's not a good look. <laughs> I want her to be cool though. I have hope for her. But I feel like kids gotta be real tech savvy to be cool. She's not good with computers. She's not good with anything technology wise, you know? And I feel bad for her. Cause when I was a kid to be cool was pretty simple cause all I had to do was have a mechanical pencil, right? Remember those days? Hell yeah. Cause you just pump out all that lead and then you walk around to everybody and you're like, hey, I'm shooting heroin. And then everyone's like, hey, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but it turns out shooting heroin is not cool. <laughs> but at that age, I thought everything my mom did was pretty fucking sweet, you know? that joke so much <laughs> I had a <laughs> I had an STD scare not too long ago ladies and gentlemen that's something that happened to me just moving right along yeah an STD scare don't judge me this is what happened <laughs> a, I, I made love to a lady and I did not wear a condom because she had honest eyes So I just thought I could trust her, you know. But then a week later, she died. So I was just like, I probably got something. But I don't, everything a-okay. It turns out this lady was just real old. She ghosted me. That's what I'm trying to get at. Old bitches and old food. That's what I'm about. I just need to find a lady so old she can't finish a full meal, and I'll be set. <laughs> Anyway, this joke is mean, okay? This is a mean joke, but my feelings were hurt when I wrote it, so that's why this joke is mean, okay? 
comes from heartache. I was uh, hanging out with this lady this one time, and we're on a date, you know, and I'm trying to be like a vulnerable person. I like her, whatever. We're hanging out, having a great time. And she looks at me, and she goes, hey, Joe, will you be my purse for the night? And no one's ever asked me that before, so I didn't know what it meant, you know? I thought she was into me. And I'm thinking about it. I'm like, your purse, okay. <laughs> it's like that thing that you keep by your side all night and you have all your secrets in. <laughs> I'll do that. And then she goes, I just want you to hold my phone. So now I'm heartbroken, and I'm like, well, will you be my wallet for the night? And she was like, you want me to hold your money? And I was like, I don't have any money. <laughs> I just want to stick this old condom in you. <laughs> so we don't talk anymore. Everything's real good. Hey, man, you guys have been a lot of fun. Thanks for coming out tonight. I appreciate the hell out of you. Take care of yourself.